A few nights ago, I decided I needed to get a small portable reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. So I looked on the usual auction sites and I found this one on Shop Goodwill for about $30 with no bids, one cent shipping, and about an hour to go. Waited until the auction was almost done and jumped on it and I won it. And I got it for $30. I was the only person to bid. It arrived in the original box. Inside of it is the instructions, the warranty card, A whole bunch of accessories came with it, including a bunch of external microphones. The original microphone with a remote control on it so you can start and stop the tape recorder while you're talking. An extra reel of tape and a take-up reel. And, of course, the tape recorder itself. So here's the tape recorder. Let me take off the cover on the front. And there's already a reel of tape on it with a bunch of stuff recorded on it. I can't quite read the writing. One thing that caught my eye when I took off the cover was this funny little post sticking up out of the top. It's also interesting how the tape head is off to one side. An interesting feature of this tape recorder is that it doesn't use push buttons like other tape recorders. Instead, it uses what looks like a gear shift knob from a car. In the front here is the microphone input with the control and the earphone output. And on the back is the battery cover and it takes 6C batteries. The battery cover is kind of loose these days. On the side here is the DC input. On the inside of the cover are some instructions for how to load the tape and how to play the tape. Let's take a quick look at the instructions for the Craig 212 two-speed portable tape recorder. On the back it's got the specifications and a list of the accessories that were originally included. And below that is the schematics, something you don't find in products anymore. Inside the manual covers the basics such as what all of the parts are that are on the tape recorder. Basic functionality of the tape recorder, including playback, recording, fast forward, and rewind. And remember that post that was sticking out? Well, it turns out that's actually part of how to control the tape speed. I actually wasn't planning to do a video on this tape recorder, but this seems so unusual to me. This may have been a common way that it was done back then, I don't really know, but I was expecting to find a switch to change the speed or a lever. The way this works is you unscrew the capstan sleeve and then screw it down on the capstan, and it increases the diameter, which increases the speed. Luckily, the capstan sleeve was still included. It could have been easily re removed and lost. There's also some instructions here on how to record from a telephone. The thing I do find a little bit odd about it, though, is they tell you to put the pickup coil on the back of the phone. The pickup coils I have, you put on the handset up near the earpiece. I'm wondering if there really was a pickup coil that went on the back of the phone, and if there was, how did it work? What, what magnetic fields would it pick up? If anyone has ever seen a pickup coil that goes on the back of the telephone, let me know. The warranty card was actually a little envelope and the original receipt was inside of it. I wonder if that means my warranty's still good. It was originally purchased at a Safeway drug center, which at first you think, well, Safeway, that's a grocery store. Well, that's a weird place to buy a tape recorder. But actually, I remember buying electronics at drug stores all the time. I looked it up and the Safeway drug center is likely the same chain as the Safeway grocery stores. And it's also the same chain as the Payless drug stores. The Goodwill that I purchased this tape recorder from was in Olympia, Washington. At some point, several of the Payless stores in Washington were sold to the Safeway chain and became known as Safeway Drug Centers. So even though the receipt says Safeway, it wasn't actually purchased at a grocery store. All right, let's hook up some power and see if it works. Whoa, 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 wrong way. That's not quite what I wanted to do. There was no indication which way the polarity was, and I think the polarity was backwards. Let me wind this back up, and then I'll switch the polarity on the power supply. Okay. 
papers over the series, you know, telling you what the papers said. Seems to work, but I think it's either got loose belts or the pinch roller isn't pinching hard enough. Maybe if I clean the pinch roller or replace the belts, I can get this thing working. It's even got the schematic inside. There's the belt, it's quite loose. The circumference is about 234, so let's mock that up in Fusion 360. It's really easy to model a belt in Fusion 360. Just make a circle with the right diameter, extrude it, and you're done. All you need now is a 3D printer and some flexible filament. So there's the old belt, and there's the new belt, fresh off the 3D printer. So I put in the two new belts that I 3D printed, and I also did some cleaning on the, the pinch roller here, and it plays quite a bit better, although I still need to put some pressure here. Lakers did it again, man. I'm so happy. I'm when I go to school, man, I'm gonna be say, hey, man, I'm beat over. So if I just push here, just slightly. So I'm wondering if maybe I can just tighten this spring here a little bit. So the idea here is if I just make the spring just a little bit shorter, it'll be it'll have a little more tension in it. We'll look at the scoring figures when we return with Warriors wrap up in one minute. Well, that sounds pretty good. All right, now that the tape recorder is working, let's try it out. So let's record. Ah, it's set to off. So how well does this thing work? Can it pick me up? It's supposed to have auto volume level. They wind it a little bit. That seems to work. So let's try the other speed. You rewind it a little bit. And so to change the speed, I take off the capstan sleeve and I put it on here. And let's play that. Sounds like the chipmunks, except quite a bit faster. All right, let's try recording at the higher speed. All right, so now I am recording at three and three quarter inches per second instead of the one seven eighth. Does it make any difference in the sound quality? Let's listen and find out. Rewind. All right, so now I am recording at three and three quarter inches per second instead of the one seven eighth. Does it make any difference in the sound quality? Let's listen and find out. Another thing I noticed was that I can use the remote control in playback to stop it and start it. All right, so now I am recording at three and three quarter inches per second. Is the one seven eighth. Does it make any difference in the sound quality? Let's listen and find out. So another thing I noticed was that I can use the remote to control the playback too, instead of just record. But what's interesting is with it off, here's on, here's off, I can still rewind and I can still fast forward. That might be a useful feature for transcribing something. Let's try it playing back the high speed recording at the slower speed. So let me take the sleeve off. That really reminds me of the Star Trek episode, The Lights of Zatar, where the girl is speaking really slowly. So 
So of course being into retro computers, I'm going to have to try hooking up an old computer to see if I can store a program and load it back from the Craig 212. So let's turn on the computer. And there's no program in it. So let me type in a really short one. So here's the program listing, and run it, and so let's try writing it to tape. So we'll put this into record mode, and then save it. That was quick. All right, let's re rewind it here. And new and list, it's gone. So let's load. And nothing. All right, let's try maybe doing it again at the faster speed. All right, let's try recording this one to tape. And that is quick. All right, rewind it. Make sure I'm at the right spot. All right. And then let's new it out. List, make sure it's not there. And let's try loading. Turn this way up. Ah, it found it. Let's list it. And there it is. And run. It works! At least on the high speed. It didn't seem to work on the low speed. That's pretty cool. I'm sure you're wondering what was on the tapes that came with the recorder. Of course, I had to find out too, so I listened to them and picked out a few things that I thought might be entertaining. First off is a little sports from 1973. Came into the game with 35%, Mullins came in at 37%, and the Lakers Goodrich at 38%. Rick was unable to get a good percentage going tonight, was able to hit uh, only uh, three baskets in the ball game. And uh, how much was attributable to the injured neck muscle, it's hard to say, but obviously... This game wrap-up has been brought to you by Bob Ostro, maker of all those delicious delicatessen foods, and by John Burrell, the name for Hardy Meats. Again, as the Lakers win four games to one, the Western Conference Championship Series, the final score was 128-118 over the Warriors. We'll be seeing you sometime next fall, around October, as the Warriors go back to the trail again in the exhibition, preparing for 1973. Bob Kutcher, the pro, you're in favor and announcer. The Lakers won in the second game, 104-93. And here's the score by quarters. First, Golden State led 30 to 20 in the first quarter. Then the second quarter, they scored 20 points and LA scored 18. On another tape, I found a group recording some songs that were popular in the late 50s. The quality on this is not very good. Uh, I'm wondering if it was copied from another tape using a microphone next to a speaker.
And the last bit here is some audio from a courtroom scene from an episode of Guiding Light from the end of 1968. The recording was at seven and a half inches per second, so it was definitely not recorded on this machine. Hope you enjoyed this look at a portable reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. While not extremely exotic, it did have a couple of features that I thought were unusual. Thanks for watching, and I'll let Bob the Pro sign us off. Thank you, and goodbye, but not for now, because I might take some more. <laughs>